This should be somewhat like episode 10. If it's not, then it's episode 11. It's the number. It's basically <laughs> an incrementally increasing series of serial numbers, Monty, that represents where we are in the continuum of time related to space and objects in our lives. I don't have to break that whole thing down for you. That's how episode numbers actually work. <laughs> this is by Thank the numbers. You. See, I, I'm, glad, I'm glad you actually know what the number of the show is well, that, on our first show. That, that was actually a, a metaphor there, Monty, for how you can not only track life through the experiential, very subjective experience of life, but by tracking numbers and trying to understand sequences and patterns. So I'm, in many ways, I'm living my life by the numbers, especially when that check comes in pay me so you know that's actually one of my catchphrases now but i'm not even joking like I, I did that as a joke on some csgo stream on some analysis like pay me when someone did something and i think i've done it like about 50 times now it's the most because i think what i like about it is it's the most obnoxious like gesture you can do to anyone like pay me is so you just like loving the money but whatever i am loving the money so apologies to any from after who finds that obnoxious but no really do pay me you do you keep doing it so we're back with by the numbers, and obviously it's totally different this time, Monty, because all the past weeks, every single league we did was still just regular season. And the show, as I explained, because we're only at number 10 or possibly 11, depending on whether I know, because we're only at that number, it means we've never done our playoffs before. So we've actually never got to see what it's like in, in a fantasy to do playoffs under this system. Now, do you have any basic breakdown of the differences between doing fantasy here? Because obviously it's a series and you don't know how many games are going to go on compared to when you, you're just doing games. Well, I mean, obviously, we talk a lot about picking the games uh, in Korea that are going to go to three games. Well, it's even more important to pick the ones who are going to five games because it's not just one game more. There's a possibility of having two games more, right? So it does become a bit dicier, I think, in that regard. Um, yeah. Yeah. So pick do the you, ones that are going to five games. Do you have like a set strategy in mind in that sense? Like, for example, okay, obviously Fnatic's not playing right now in the ones we're going to do because we're going to do the first round. But imagine a world where Fnatic was going to play and you thought they were a lock to go 3-0. Yeah. Instead, you probably don't want to you pick them. purposely not do that, even though you might get a lot of points for the three games? How do you think that works? Well, it depends on what you're doing. Like, if I was running a 50-50 and I needed just to fill up my roster with some really stable players who I knew were going to create some points or something like that, then yeah, maybe I would do something along those lines. But And also the risk of having the having the team that you think is going to go to five games is that they might lose because it's a closer series, whereas you you might be guaranteed a win if it's going to be a 3-0. Probably 3-1 is the safest way to go, um, I would say. Okay, and I have one more question before we get into the specifics, okay, which is that on Alpha Draft, they have some which are day one of LCS, so the first the two matches or whatever. Then they have day two, which is the, the next two matches. But they also have one that's just all. So the first, the, the first, well, there's four opening round matches in both the regions. Four quarterfinals, uh, LCS. Yeah. So do you have a basic idea on that one as to which one you think is better to enter? I mean, I would enter the all one because there are simply more options for players to pick. Um, and you're only dealing from four players for, per position if you pick from just day one or just day two. So if you really want to get into the statistics and start looking at these players, uh, then I would do one of the all ones just because you have so many more options. Because what's funny is, on one sense, I know, because on LCK we've had this occasionally, where certain days would be very few games, you know, like maybe three or four matches tops. I know that in the past, when I've seen that happen, and I've tried entering those contests, so it actually initially seemed like, oh, this is actually easier, because, you know, it's pretty obvious as to who the ones that should be the lock is, and then here's the one that should be the questionable one, and basically I'm only deciding between these sort of three or four options, but actually... That's good in that sense. Like you're you're going to be in the better general direction anyway. But it also can be worse if you lose because then sometimes you lose and you go and check. You know that number one guy. You know, like you jealously look what he picked. And if you find out that he just picked one that was very hard to know, like some weird support player who just got way more points than he ever normally would, it feels way more frustrating. Like you had less less play in that sense. You know, so I prefer the bigger ones myself where there's more options. Yeah. Therefore, people can make more choices. And in theory, you yourself could make some cool little choice where you have a sense about what's going to happen here that isn't, wasn't necessarily reflected in just the KDA that everyone had the last two weeks, you know. 
Right. So we're going to do that initially when we're talking. Yeah, come to think of it, we're not doing EU and NA actually because both combined. So, we're okay, doing... we'll do. So, first, we'll the just first do... round of LCS playoffs. Yeah, let's just do all the players together. So this is uh, this is going to be interesting because this is going to be the first time that we actually have a chance to um, combine NA and EU players and look at them side by side in terms of points. So on this actually, show, I mean, in the past you actually could sometimes do sure. the ones where you did all of them, you know? Right. Uh, but sure, like this is this is going to be the first one where you're forced to, unless you really want, don't want to. Uh, combine NA and EU players on the same roster for the playoffs. So I really like this. It's going to be fun. By the way, yeah, there, is a, sense. there is a really big giveaway for Alpha Draft right now. Uh, yeah. Basically, they're having a contest where it's free to enter. You can enter up to 20 times, and it's $2,500 in prizes, and it's for the entire playoffs. So you pick your team for... The entire playoffs. So pick the teams you think will get into the finals, or think that pick the teams you think will get to the most points. So perhaps a team that plays in round one but may get knocked out in the semis. Maybe they don't go to the finals, but they play the same number of times as say Fnatic if they were to go to the finals. That is to say, two best of fives. So there's um there it should be really interesting to see how that plays out. So if you really want to try that, or you're trying Alpha Draft for the first time, just go for it. Just so it's free. Also, there's tons of people have entered it already, so enter it, and I'd do the full 20 if I were you just to, to see what you can do. Because if you beat 200, whatever, 200K people or something, it'd be pretty baller, right? Might have only been 30K. I forget these numbers, Monty. That's why I'm on this show, to learn about numbers. <laughs> Great. It's like a scholarship for me on how <laughs> statistics work, you know? It's actually like this myth that I base my whole career on statistics. I don't, I don't know if I call about statistics. So, okay. <laughs> So the four matches we have is H2K Giants, Unicorns of Love, Rock Hat, that's EU, and we have Tip versus Dignitas, and TSM versus Gravity. So we'll just start with the basic rough form guide of how, because, I mean, we actually discussed some of this on some of the insight, but we're going to do it stats-based, obviously, here, in, in difference to the other one. So H2K Giants. Now, from what I remember on some of the insight, you said you agreed with me, like, yes, H2K should win this. Like, you know, everything, the nature of it being a series and the strategical team, this is all great. But you didn't sound that confident. So is this a series that has a chance of going four or five games? I think it has. A, it probably will go four games. I don't know. Vander was saying that, the, that H2K was having some internal issues that he couldn't tell us what they were. So I don't know exactly what that means um, or how serious it is in relation to this particular series. Um I think it should be four games for H2K. Uh, H2K, uh, w it, it's interesting to look at the combined stats too, because even in the combined stats, Hjarnan is still really, really far up there when it comes to fantasy points while winning. So he's probably the guy, he and Ryu are the guys you really want to go after, but Hjarnan should be sort of the first priority, which is why he's the most expensive player, uh, because this is probably the most likely matchup I mean, if we just look at the, the games, I would say this is the most clear-cut on paper, at least, going into this. So, I think that H2K is, is a safe choice here, but they're also an expensive choice for obvious reasons, because they're, they're the most likely to win. But they're also probably not going to go to five games. And so, another issue that we have to obviously discuss when we talk about this particular matchup is that... When you remember how things went over in the regular split, the storyline for these two teams went like this. H2K was that team. There's one of these teams in every region who wins a lot of games, like at least 60%, 70%, you know, good win rate. But the problem is only one or two players get good points when they win. Like basically from what I remember, like Kjarnan had excellent stats for everyone. Kassing had very good stats for support. And then I think uh, Ryu had like decent stats sometimes, and, that, and even then he's he was actually kind of he's right? actually gone up. He's actually gone up in terms of his mid lane value. Um, he's third out of EU mid laners, so he's behind Pepinero and uh, Nuke Duck. And he's basically. now quite close in wins to where Hyanan is, amazingly. But that's also because Hyanan's dropped off a bit. The problem is the people who are the number one stats people. During their peaks of the season, they'll be at like 40 points or something when they win. But if you notice in nearly all the leagues, everyone's coming down as the season's gone on, you know. Because you, right. you can't maintain that forever, even in wins. 
Yeah, the, to put this into context too, Kasing has more points than Odo Omne and Lulex as a support. So probably don't want to be picking Odo Omne and Lulex. If you think that Giants is going to take a big upset here, Adra and Pepidira still put up amazing fantasy points when they win. Um, Adra would be number three. The top five, when we combine all the players in the playoffs right now, are Nuke Duck as number one. So Nuke Duck is actually probably going to be one of the most valuable picks that we discuss here. Because he's the third most expensive mid laner, but I would say that Rockat's going to beat Unicorns of Love. So Noop Duck, Core JJ, Adra, uh, and then Gate slash Shao Wei Shao. It's a little. Pepinero? Yeah, Power of Evil, Apollo, and Pepinero, followed by Hyarnid and Shifter. So here's the so, thing in this series, Monty, what you're essentially forced to do is either spend a lot of money on Ryu and Hyarnid, and the problem is they're not the biggest point getters. So that's an issue right there if you're spending all your salary. Uh, they're pretty or good. You they're pretty to, good. Yeah, but the problem is they're really expensive. So yes, you I, either have to do that or I'm, I'm assuming the other option is don't go for the HUK players, gamble on Giants players or just skip this match entirely. So if you, is it, would it be ridiculous to gamble on the Giants players based on what they're worth? Like if I have a look now how much Pepinero is. 7,100. Uh, he's the third that's, that's cheapest. That's very reasonable. Adra is also right? Adra as the third player in terms of points while winning, but he's sixty nine hundred. He's the second cheapest. But again, but I if don't this goes to five like series, even play. even if they lose, though, if it goes to five games, couldn't that be good points? Yep, very well could be. Not a bad gamble there, especially if you're doing that massive one where it's the free one. I'd do that as one of your lineups. Do it. Have the Giants best lineup. <laughs> yeah, and you can actually well. enjoy League of Legends when the t- wrong team wins. I've never got to experience that myself, except that one time where I uh, bet on Dig and just despite the world. <laughs> it, it was good. It was a good time. So the other matchup, obviously, is the Unicorns Love Rock Out one. So you said before, Nuke Duck is absolutely one of the players you want, right? Because when he wins, well, no, he wins huge. He wins bigger than anybody else. Yes. He's pretty crazy. In that but regard. here's the problem. In terms of the series he's playing, it's against the Unicorns of Love. Now, we picked Rockat to win this, right? Yes, I did. And you did, yes, on Summoning Insight. But, but does the nature of Unicorns of Love... In fact, actually, let me ask you this first. So a new factor that's coming into the mix is that Horo has been added to Unicorns of Love. Now, in theory, shouldn't that in some way... I mean, this, I, I say it in theory, stabilize Unicorns of Love style of play a bit more? Because I don't think of Horo well, as some like, crazy jungler. No. One would think that it would, but also there's such a limited amount of time for Horo to practice with UOL and get integrated into their roster that it does become a bit of a question mark. So the basic question here that really we need to address before we get into like which players to get is if anyone watched the last playoffs of last year, they're going to be like, oh, I'm definitely going all in on like every series Unicorns loves plays. I'm going to try and find their best players and bet them because, you know, every series is going to be five games. It's going to be back for, you know, they seem like the one team where no matter who they were playing, it would never be a 3-0, even okay. if it was for them, even if they were winning. So does Unicorns love still retain the same nature when they play Rock at, do you think? I don't know because they lost a player. So it's really difficult to tell what their current form is. We don't have any recent information about Horo either so it's hard for me to say whether to recommend him or not he's quite expensive I do think Rocket's going to win this um, just because they've had less roster instability and swapping out an AD carry isn't really that big of a deal and can they 3-0? More... I don't think so it should be 3-1 the problem is Rocket themselves have had their own issues right stringing so I would wings be... together right <laughs> I would be very surprised if they could 3-0. I think they win this 3-1 or 3-2 instead. Uh, remember that Rocket and Unicorns of Love did split 1-1 in the regular season. So here's the uh, thing. When, you, when I add up all the things you've told me, the fact that Nuke Duck is actually 7,900, so he's 400 less than Ryu, and he's like 900 less than Gate. And so just from the set that what we've already talked about in the H2K series, he gets tons of points. And if you think about it, even if they were to lose, it's very unlikely Rockat's getting 3 0 I think if Rockat lose, they're the ones losing 2-3, to three, you know. So I think Nuke Duck's like a, a lock here. I'd, I'd yeah. be picking him heavily. Not to mention that Steve actually gets the second most points of any player on Rockat. He gets more than Mr. Rollis does when they win. So he may be worth going for here. Uh, just because of that of that single factor. 
Now, Mr. Rallis does get more points on average, so that includes the losses. So he's a bit more stable. But if you think Rocket's going to win, which I do. Now, Steve's still third most expensive mid laner. He's a bit on the pricier side. But you may want to go for that pick. So on the Unicorns of Love side, who is worth purchasing at the moment? Uh, I guess if you had to go with somebody, it should be Power of Evil. Maybe you get him for a flex a flex selection, but I think you can probably do better considering that he is the same price as Bjergsen. So I think I would, if I had 7,800, I would trend towards Bjergsen in that regard because I think TSM is going to win over Gravity. So in NA, we have Tip versus Dig. Now, we, I think we all picked Tip to win this, right? But no, here's the thing. Uh, we did, I think, but we didn't. Weren't, did you pick Dignitas? No, no, no. I picked, I picked Impulse, but I'm a little concerned because, again, they have a new player in Gate, and I haven't been impressed with Gate's individual play. Gate is also He's the, the most, most expensive, expensive mid laner. I don't know about that one. I don't think there's enough sample size. Now, Gate is currently ranked fourth out of players when it comes to points while winning. So he's been putting up the numbers, but there's, again, it's a very small sample size, and I think that the playoffs are likely to be more difficult. So I think Impulse will win. I'd rather, even though it's a bit lower, kind of put my, put my fantasy salary into Rush, Rush is, I just feel that that's a more reliable number at this point. Or even Apollo. I mean, Apollo, Rush, and Gate are all in the top 10. I mean, we know that Impulse is a team that puts up points. Yeah, the problem and is, Apollo is Rush is 8,000. Yeah, well, Apollo is 8,200, which actually isn't too bad when it comes to AD carry. Now, the interesting thing here is that, remember back to when I was say, talking about Core JJ. He is second when it comes to points while winning. And Shifter is pretty far up at the top two, just above Rush in the top 10. So this is something that could really work out for Dignitas because those players are so cheap. And I don't think it's outside of the realm of possibility that Dignitas takes this to the five games or even wins the series. And in fact, this series is likely to be the bloodiest out of all of these series. I don't know. Unicorns of Love versus Rocket. So do you think, is that the factor then? Because the problem is, when you say to get Rush, since his points aren't that great, and he's so expensive, even for a jungler. No, his points are very he, good. His yeah, but he's 8,000. He's as much as like yeah. your mid and flex are going to be almost. So okay, the problem with that is. Points, he gets more points than players like Ryu, Mr. Rollis, okay. Erickson. But right? here's my so problem. He worth it. The, ma the main reason that he'll be worth it is if what you're saying is correct, that it's a super bloody series, and especially if it's going to be more than three games. It's a, that's a good opportunity to potentially get someone who points-wise wouldn't look as, as sick as some of the carries, but could get more in that respect, right? Right. So what about on the other side? What if people want Dignitas? I think Core JJ, you go for Core JJ, you go for Shifter, and you go for Gamsu. So Core JJ, um, as usual, by the way, since Dignitas fell off like motherfuckers, that all these players talk about now, by the way, are like the cheapest in the league, basically. Yes. And they I think they do have a shot at winning a game or two. And if there is that upset, these are gonna be the craziest value picks ever because when Dignitas wins, these guys put up really good numbers. Those are the players to definitely make another lineup of that you put into that yes. twenty entry thing. Yes, absolutely. Make one that revolves around Dignitas because if there is an upset, they are going to do really, really well. And it's unlikely that Dignitas is going to 3-0 impulse or something like that. It's going to be 3-1 or 3-2 that Dignitas wins. Okay, so for the last matchup, it's TSM versus Gravity. And I actually picked Gravity to win 3-2, but you have TSM winning 3-1. That was our original prediction. But what type of a series do you think it will be? I think it's going to be, like most Gravity games, very low kill. Uh, TSM has not shown um, that much in terms of their early game. They like to play a more reserve style where they wait out the opposition to make a mistake. So I think this is probably one of the worst series to, uh, to try and pick players from. Because even if it does go to five games, there's a possibility that there are less points than a maybe even four, four game, possibly outside chance three game series. Uh, depending, 
even though I don't think we are going to get a three-game series from any of these. But, I mean, just these get, Gravity, again, is such a poor team when it comes to fantasy because when they win, they do so with very few points. If you really feel the burning need to pick Gravity players, you can take a look at Hanser and Alltech. Hanser is actually the biggest point getter onto Gravity at the current time. But even then, they're in like the bottom 40% of players, even though they win a lot. So TSM, kind of similar story. Bjergsen is obviously the closest to getting points, but he is what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. He's 15th out of all the players that you could be picking when it comes to average points well ahead. And it's the issue bad. here is, since for each position, you only have eight choices, you can go for those ones that have lesser points. That actually might be how you win, but you have to have more than just you like the play. You have to have some weird reason as to why, like in this matchup, I think this, this guy would do even better than before, you know. But in that sense, <laughs> think, actually, let me ask you along those lines. Can, so there's only eight players per position here, okay? So people are going to have to look for some sort of weird edge. Can you think of any of these four series where there's a player whose numbers overall might not be that great, but in this type of a series, he should flourish more than more than over a whole regular season against every opponent, you know, because of the matchup, whatever. <sighs> so, oh for example, God. I mean, you could look at junglers because, if, like you're saying, in this, if, if Gravity TSM is going to be a low-kill series, then does that mean someone like Santorin isn't necessarily going to get great points? Uh, that's probably true. Uh, I would think that Santorin, who actually is second on TSM, surprisingly, TSM, I mean, I mean Wild Turtle's right. like in the bottom 10 of players, right? Santorin's still not doing well in terms of fantasy points, but we've seen that move can really shut people down. There's a possibility that Bjergsen doesn't do as well if he has to play against mid lane Jarvan or something where he has to play very reserved, right? Uh, or mid lane Urgot again. Uh, we've kind of seen how that goes. It it does limit Bjergsen's abilities to play aggressively during the laning phase. Um, I'm trying to think about some other matchups right here. Gamsu, who normally produces a lot of points, might not do so well if he's up against Impact, who is one of the better top lanes in NA. He can't really run all over Impact. I think Impact should have the upper hand in that matchup, so Gamsu's points may go down. Um, I don't know what Horo's condition is right now, but playing against somebody as aggressive early as Yankos is and a good European jungler like that may cause some issues. Hmm. Those are the those are the matchups that sort of spring to mind immediately. I mean, I think a good example is Bjergsen, actually. This is 7,800. Because... Yeah. Listen, for all you know, I mean, this is a, a real possibility. If you think of some of the issues that Gravity had, even though they had all the success, they could also just really fall flat in the games they lose and get ultra stomped. And if that happens, Bjergsen's going to be the guy, one of the few guys in the, in the playoffs who can get like 15 kills himself in a game. That, that will happen. Yeah. Especially because especially here's the beauty for fantasy of Bjergsen. He shot calls. So that's like... You know, everyone gets mad at Froggen because they're like, oh, he just shot calls so he can passively farm in the mid. Yeah, Bjergsen just pass shot calls essentially so that he goes everywhere. It's like he's got the dream of every carry. It's like he can't have a kill steal because he's the one directing everyone as to where to go. Re-engage, re-engage right now. It's just he's like, his ult's just coming off cooldown. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> in a sense, that's actually the dream fantasy scenario. Maybe maybe Bjergsen actually just plays alpha draft himself and he's like, well, I've got to really get some points this week. I spent a lot of myself on that flex pick, you know. <laughs> well, actually, you know the joke that I should have made there, Monty, obviously, is I'd love to see what Bjergsen's alpha draft would look like, like if he ever actually bought Wild Turtle. Eh? Don't you Don't you believe in him? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's the, there's the joke. I got the joke in eventually. So as we mentioned, there's the contest that's essentially a dry run. Well, it's not a dry run. You just pick your players now at the beginning, and it's going to be for the entire playoffs. So Yep. There's tons and tons of options. And obviously, this is really crazy. For people who are from Europe, okay, the analogy that you'd give to North Americans is a very famous one, which is that when the NCAA, the college basketball tournament, takes place, I think it starts with like 128, 256 teams or something. When it starts, there's a famous tradition in America where people make their bracket at the very beginning. And the idea is, even with upsets, et cetera, someone's going to get it right towards the end. It's like they get the whole bracket right, but it's going to be very, very hard. So in European terms, the, the big problem you've got here isn't just picking good players. 
because you have to pick players who also will make it through the tournament. So listen, you might think Nuke Duck's an awesome pick, but will him Nuke Duck make the final? So now yeah. you have to weigh up if he'll go out in the first round, if he'll go out in the semis, you know. Or, or I mean, that's the whole thing about it too, is that when we have teams like that have the buys, Fnatic, Team Liquid, CLG, uh, these teams are interesting, Origin as well, of course, uh, are interesting because maybe nobody actually plays three best of fives, right? That's the weird thing about this this format, is that perhaps all of the teams that advance to the semis, all four of those teams, or uh, in both NA and EU, that's what I'm referring to, lose to the number one and number two seeds. We don't have any upsets in this in this draft whatsoever, in this tournament whatsoever, which means that every team only plays two best of fives. So maybe you're looking for the elusive team that you think is going to win three best of fives. Perhaps that's TSM uh, or somebody like that who's maybe ranked a little lower than we we think maybe they should be. Um, maybe you think uh, that team like Origin is going to get upset in the playoffs. So it's it's uh, it's definitely a much different structure. So can you give me some examples of players with every player available who you think are decent gambles in that sense? Uh, I think that actually taking a look at 80 carries right now in the big free giveaway, a lot of the, like, Reckless is only 8,400. He's fourth in 80 carries. Febivin is fifth in mids. These are players that have typically done very well when it comes to fantasy points, so there could be some value in those kind of picks. Um. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's worth. I think Fnatic out. is actually good value this week. Now, it is worth saying that these players are likely to get like a three zero or a three one, considering that Fnatic hasn't lost a game. So you have to balance that against it too. There's a lot to consider here. Yeah, but that's why when I ask this overarching question, the easiest answer, okay, is look at Fnatic's side of the bracket. And unfortunately, you probably shouldn't pick anyone from the teams who are going to play Fnatic in the semis because Fnatic's an overwhelming fear and make the final, which doesn't mean you have to pick Fnatic players. But the difference is all three of the other branches at least have a lot more play to them, you know. Like the NA branches have incredible play. But most of these teams could go all the way to the final or could all lose the first match they play. But I think that's the only one you can probably rule out. It's very unlikely whoever plays Fnatic is going past Fnatic at that point. So you have to either hope they get so many points in the first round and versus Fnatic or... Don't go on that side of the bracket. Pick other people, basically. You know what? I actually think that if I, it, for doing this for me, I would actually target CLG players because if we think about CLG side of the bracket, first off, we've seen great point production out of Double Lift this season. Sure, he's expensive, but he's probably worth it in this particular format. And I think that CLG will beat the winner of Impulse versus Dignitas. But if you want to the biggest chance for a bloodbath because if either TSM or gravity advance to the semifinals Liquid against Liquid, Liquid, right. But Liquid will like, they're not big, a big point team. So maybe you don't actually select these players because they don't get a lot of points, but teams like CLG and origin, especially CLG, they're going to be facing the winner of Dignitas versus, um, uh, versus uh, team impulse. So there should be a lot of points there. Pole Belter is relatively inexpensive. Another thing to consider is the, are the origin guys. Niels is an amazing fantasy player, and he's fifth in terms of eighty carries when it comes to price. So there are some good value picks here for sure. Well, also here's another factor for NA particularly, Monty. Liquid and CLG are the two favorites because they're the higher seeds in the semis. So they're actually both likely to win their series and go to the final. But both historically have players who are still in the lineup who've had choking issues or who give up games, sometimes throw. Even Liquid did last, last split. So actually, I think it's a rare instance where a team that's the favorite, the favorite actually might still have extended series where you'll get some value out of them. Right. I think it, I think it is unlikely that CLG will choke versus Impulse with a new mid no, I mean, just to give up toss. games, though. Oh, that's like it true. actually helps. That's true. Remember, it helps you if you battle CLG players. If if, if CLG choke a game but still win the series, that's actually better for you. Right. See, that's the genius of the system. Remember, you're, you're you're in so many insight mode again. We're in alpha draft world now. These are good things when players choke but still win the game. You know when they can't close it out and that's oh they let one get away from them, it's getting yep. risky on the next one. That's ideal for us. That's our dream uh, situation. Uh, uh, Another reason why CLG is a good pick and Origin too. I mean, Zion Spartan is not actually that expensive when it comes to basically, top players. Basically, here's the analogy, okay, Monty. It's like there's a bomb that's going to go off, okay? 
And if you defuse the bomb, that's what you're betting on here. If you can defuse the bomb, you get bonus points, right? But you get more bonus points. The bonus increases the lower you let the timer run down. So if, like the movie Armageddon, you you defuse you. I actually think he blew up a bomb in that one. Whatever, whichever way around it is. If you wait until <laughs> one second to do it, when there's one second left, that's the ideal scenario. So that's what CLG need to do. Win, but at the very last moment of game five in a massive 40-minute game with 28 kills. You know, that's what ideal situation. for. And I believe in him, Monty. If you don't have faith, why are you here? I'm here. So. <laughs> well, there you go. Also, that's also why double lift. In this particular scenario, is one of the best players for this whole competition, because he's the player who could go six to three in the first thirty minutes, then throw a whole fight that gives the other <laughs> team a chance to extend the game ten minutes, which gives him a chance to get five more kills in the later team fights. What a genius player! That's amazing. That's awesome fantasy player doing everything you'd want, maximizing his fantasy points. So remember, you're so, not coach how much each, enjoying the fantasy points. <laughs> He does make a lot of fantasy points. Again, the other side of that is Origin, who has to face the Rocket versus Unicorns of Love winner, which is probably going to be a much more bloody series than uh, if H2K... Oh, no, it's H2K that faces Origin. Never mind. Unicorns of Love versus Rocket goes to Fnatic. Never mind. It's much better in NA. CLG is the, definitely the team you want to look at. So here's the thing, though. But since we're doing the massive one where people can enter 20 times and it's free... Which crazy picks should they have? So we, we mentioned Dig already. In this sort of a contest, okay, Dig could go crazy and upset Tip. Okay, that's not implausible. Could Dig actually beat CLG, do you think? Mm, I, I don't see them beating both CLG and Tip. That would be absolutely mind-blowing. So who are some not as expensive players who might be a good gamble? Um, I would say Adra and Pepinero. On the outside shot that Giants actually upset H2K, these guys are going to make a million points in fantasy. And they would have to face Origin in the second round, which would probably be pretty bloody skirmish-oriented games. So even if Giants lose, they're likely to get a certain amount of points, right? So I actually think, strangely, strangely... I yeah. think Giants is <laughs> is an interesting pick because the bra the bracket and the specific matchups, the specific matchups, the bracket, the fact that Adra and Pepinero get a million fantasy points when they win, there could be some really crazy value to those picks. I don't think it's likely, but if you want to look at a long shot that that could maximize your value, that's what I would do. I also don't think that in this massive contest, someone like Kissing is that bad because he's like 29 points, so it's not terrible, but he's like reasonably priced, 7,200, and obviously he has a chance to play all three playoff rounds. Yep, Kissing is definitely a good choice. He, for a support player, he is quite, quite valuable. Is there, in terms of the actual matchups, which one do you think is the biggest upset potential? Hmm... Probably Unicorns of Love, Rockat. I don't think that's very clear cut. Uh, I, I would take Rockat, but I have no idea what Unicorns of Love situation is. And we, we've, yeah, that is uh, definitely a possibility of an upset. Impulse versus Dig because of Gate and the change in mid laners is also pretty, pretty. I mean, there, there are a lot of these. The, I don't know. Because there's a lot of these that aren't very clear. I mean, I picked TSM to beat Gravity, but we wouldn't consider it really an upset if Gravity beat TSM because they're the higher seeded team, right? Plus, it'd just be great. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, here's a question I have for you. Hypothetical world, Monty. Obviously, this could never happen in real life. Don't worry. Don't even don't 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 get concerned about the possibility that, like, you know, if if you here's the thing: if you go into the ocean, Monty, even the ocean in England, actually, sometimes great white sharks are spotted off the coast of England every now and then. But even so, even if you went in the water, it's actually very unlikely the shark would get to you. That it, that'd be the day it was there. That it would come up, it would kill you, it would attack you. But we all know if you've seen the movie Jaws, you're afraid of being around great white sharks. Okay, you know what they can do. So let's imagine that somehow, what we don't know right now, 
is that somewhere off in some sick laboratory, some steampunk-esque world, that's how I imagine the Unicorns of Love mansion that they live in, they're busy working on Horro. So you think it's Horro from SK <laughs> Telecom S. It's not. This is like a sick, twisted, mutant version of Horro. It's sort of it's, like in this movie Street Fighter where they made Blanca, like watch all that horrific violence and be pumped with steroids. And when he came out, he was just a rage-induced monster. He was nothing like the man that Gael knew before, Monty. See, I'm really having to work with him. So, I'm earn my money. so Horro comes out and he, he has embraced, Monty, the chaos style. He's got the chaos emeralds attached around his helmet. He's just, <laughs> and the full chaos styles in flow. So as a result, unicorns of love really might go crazy, win three to two in the first series over Rock Hat. Then they go, oh my God, they're winning games against Fanatic. Who knows, Monty? Oh, Maybe geez. they can even get to a and then, fifth And then Fanatic, Fanatic Who knows uh, starts in a fifth game. If you get, if you get taken starts playing game, like, smite, smite Teleport Top Lee Sin. You know, Fanatic just... Has yeah. a mental breakdown like they did in the last playoffs in terms of strategy, and we see them uh, actually starting to drop some games through the fault of their own. Well, maybe it's a possibility. Maybe Hora will come out like that. Maybe he has been indoctrinated into the use of j- jungle nar. So, in such a world where Unicorns Love again made this miracle run, which, by the way, would be so bad for you after all the crowing you've done and all those <laughs> seventy incentives. But anyway, I guess you could just lie. <laughs> You could, well, I guess actually you've got the trap, the trap card there, Monty, because in, in some sense you want them to do that, to, to again make a sick run. So you can just use the logic, like your own Jat style, where you can just be like, ah, but it's actually because they got a Korean and a guy who actually plays more standard. That's why, that's why they were able to do it, because they would have lost this time. So, okay, I can see you've prepared that one already, okay? But anyway. I don't know, Unicorns of Love prepared it for me. I don't know what you're talking about. In such a world where Unicorns of Love did make this miracle run, are there specific players who, if you, if they were allowed to play all three series, not just ones who automatically get the most points, is the ones that you could think of who who would have to do well for that to happen? Well, I think Power of Evil would definitely... Power of Evil and Horo, I think, would definitely have to step up. But Power of Evil already is the central carry of that team. So, yeah, I think you definitely take a look at Power, Power of Evil and Vardags and Horo. Those are the three players that you, you want to take a look at in this, in this scenario. But if you believe the Unicorns of Love are going to go on an epic run, you definitely 100% want Power of Evil on your team. Because, I mean, I don't think that Unicorns of Love is even going to eat Rock Hat. But listen, if they did, one thing I'll say is that Unicorns of Love Rock Hat and Unicorns of Love Fnatic, one of the few people who can make their series interesting is Power of Evil because these are mids that yeah. he, he can go against. And if you remember the final last year, part of the reason why is in the games of Fnatic didn't win, that's when Power of Evil would have a great game and when Feb of them would struggle. And that, that was actually one of the interesting dynamics there. Is there anyone, who's, who is the team in NA who could do this? Like, I mean, the obvious one we have to pick really, Monty, is Dig, right? You have to believe right, some of that Dig will. Because what Dig do, here's the secret of Dignitas. You know that whole thing I told you, Monty, that theory? It's not a bad theory. It just sounds idiotic about how Keen is an anti-mage. The problem, no, an anti-carry. The problem with the theory, okay, is it might even be true. might even statistically bear out. But don't say it like he's trying to do that. He doesn't know what he's <laughs> doing there. That is just his <laughs> yeah. style of play. And it just, it's, it's a unicorn of it. My, microcosm basically that's what his players get he doesn't know why he's doing it it just works somehow and one day he's not going to know how it doesn't work anymore and he screwed it at a point in time because much as if the imagine if Doc Brown had accidentally made that DeLorean so it could go through time and then the flux capacitor breaks how's he going to fix it then eh he's not going to know is he? he's just know the mechanisms of how the machine works there's the analogy for you so here's the problem if Dig goes crazy in that sense the problem is even if they go all three series the players are super cheap Dig is the team where they almost play like anti League of Legends. They just try to, they're, they're like five Nunus just trying to ruin your game. They're not even out there trying to dominate themselves. I'm awesome. Yet. They're just there to ruin your game and make it worse. So if they were to go all three <laughs> series, would they be big point getters, do you think? Dignitas? Yeah. Yes, they would be. We, we discussed this. Core is absolutely huge in terms of points. It, Shifter does well. Gamsu does well. All of these guys, they put up big numbers when they win. So if Dignitas, in the unlikely event they go to the finals, yes, you should probably have Core JJ on your team. If we had to pick some players who have a breakout playoffs this time, I'm going to throw some names at you. You give me your thoughts, okay? okay. So if someone is very hyped, because listen, Monty, for all we know, every single game he plays Azir, CLG tried to tower dive him. It's Phoenix. He just 1v4 people every single game. I mean, what have you ever noticed, Monty? Phoenix has to be one of the highest, like, 
rated players amongst fans all the time. So he must be an incredible player, right? Very expensive, but, you know. He's he, okay. Could he have a breakout this time? No, I think people are actually going to ban Azir, and then when Azir is banned, I don't think he's going to look as good on other champions. So I don't think – I think Phoenix will be fine. I think he'll be perfectly serviceable. I think he'll okay. be pretty good. But I don't think he's going to be absolutely amazing on champions as long as he can't get his hands on Azir. And even with the Azir nerfs, it may not matter, really. But maybe – they bring back the old flex pick Corky, and he starts running I don't that think again. They will. <laughs> Twin force Corky. Did you like that? It was fine. What about? Okay, so someone like Altec hasn't had the best points because he plays on gravity, but he's got a very good chance potentially to go to all three. He could. He could go to the final, right? Uh, yes, yes, he could. And Altec is a player that basically in the shitty, shitty point structure of Gravity, Hanser and Altec are right next to each other. So I think that, but even, even if Altec goes to the finals, I don't think I could recommend him as a pick because he never gets any points. But he's so cheap. He's the fifth cheapest player. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah, so he's still. That's not bad, right? Altec, Altec also, ugh. Yes, he's the main carry, and he, he has to have a big playoffs. Okay, that's fair. If Gravity is going to make the finals, the, he is going to have to show up like never before to carry the shit out of his team because Keen doesn't do any damage. Okay, then, Monty. I'll, I'll apply the same question then. You said if they make it and if they do this. Well, what about when TSM definitely do figure it all out and win the playoffs because, you know, they always make the finals, Monty. They've won the last two. So when they do, and it turns out Wild Turtle's really awesome again, what will, if he was to play all three series, you know, could he, could he be an awesome pick? Uh, well, you basically just wrote the, the storyline in advance, didn't you, there, that he turns it up. Basically, just ask him, does he? <laughs> okay, no, I don't think so. He's actually a terrible fantasy choice right now. When it comes to points, I mean, he is, I'm trying to think, he is the worst AD carry for fantasy points in both NA and EU. So I would tend to stay away from him. Bjergsen is probably the only TSM player you want on your team. See, that's, well, I mean, you don't even need to add the fantasy part about that bit, but <laughs> anyway, so here's the thing, one T. That's where people will get upset. Though, cause they'll be like, how can you say he's the worst? No, no, mathematically. Like, statistically, he's been shown to be the worst. So at this point, <laughs> if you're a TSM fan, you can, listen, go ahead. You can keep believing the guy's really good on any level, subjective, quantitative, statistically. But what you guys need to do is stop citing stats yourself. Like, don't, don't give good stats. What you should do is, TSM fans, the next stage for you, the next evolution, as it were, is to become like like right-wing Christians in America who actually deny evolution exists and that say that science is biased, you know, that science is lies and it's like man's thinking as opposed to God's thinking. That's what you guys need to do about stats and just keep picking these people. <laughs> just have faith, okay? Believe in them. For all you know, Reggie's right there now working with Wild Turtle on how to be a great AD carry because, you know, Reginald used to play Zed. That's an AD carry champion. It does, it does do attack damage. So there's a tenuous link there, but I'm working on something there. So maybe he's helping him there. Maybe he's teaching him how to do it. Maybe, maybe Moyamti, maybe Wild Turtle's one of those guys. He just chills during the regular season. He waits till it's the big game. And then when it's the big game, he just says, put me in, coach. And then he that just goes ham. And, that, that and that's like it. the end of the, uh, the Mighty Dogs slash Hoosers slash all, all the movies where the, the kid who's like the... It, Never Wild made Turtles it comes the, good at the end. The feel good ending. Yeah. And Bjergsen they have runs the terrible over. Terrible right regular season. They barely get into the playoffs. Bjergsen runs over. They lift him onto his shoulders. And they're all just shouting, turtle, turtle. And, and actually, over at the door, there's a door open and someone just stood like halfway in the door. And it's just Keith. And Keith just looks in and he goes, I knew you could do it, Tull. And one tear <laughs> runs down his face. And then as the celebration goes on and the camera looks away, Keith just walks out the door and the door closes behind him. <laughs> the cre credits directed by Dr. Thorin Shields. Yeah. <laughs> Good, right? That could happen. I knew you'd always make a movie about TSM, your obsession. You have this, you have this I know. psychological I know need to, uh, to focus on them. So I, d I don't know what it is. You know. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty much it for this week. Obviously... What the fuck? We're going to talk about Korea. Oh, yeah, that's right. Korea. Oh, that's <laughs> All right, let's go over there then. Let me see. 
trying to take this away from me. Now, I know that you're a lot like you know most of those LCS fans, Thorin, where once the LCS playoffs start, you can't even possibly think about Korea any longer or the fact that there might be more exciting games going on in spite of the fact that they're not playoff games. Well, you would be wrong this week because all the games are really boring in Korea, but you didn't even think about okay. it. Okay. On day one, we have three matchups only. So this is going to be another one of those nightmare scenarios where the guy who picks like fucking chaser on this one day where you don't get all the points you well day one and day one and day two is is always three matchups because there's two on the wednesday one on thursday so day one i am kt Janair anarchy spend uh, samsung galaxy skt so of the three those in theory should all be one-sided victories money so let's just start in the middle of that okay is there a chance that anarchy beats Jin Air? Is there a chance? <laughs> yes. Well, since the Jin Air plays are so expensive, that probably sounds quite good then on the anarchy side, right? They're all super Especially cheap. Especially since GBM slash Kuzan, the Jin Air mid, is the most imp- the expensive. So is Pilot, Captain Jack. So is Chaser. Um, yeah. And Jin Air lost to Spenu. So who the fuck knows what's going on right now when it comes to that? That said, SK Telecom players are pretty cheap against Samsung. Faker is the third most expensive mid laner. I definitely think he's more likely to win than GBM is versus Anarchy. But these are all pretty one-sided matchups. I don't think Genera is going to choke again like they did versus Spenu. Maybe I'm optimistic in that regard. Could mean that Mickey has insane value, obviously. So of uh, the Mickey- three matchups, is there any that definitely won't be three games? I am versus KT. At this point in the season, in this sort of a se- series, I mean, listen, Junior aren't going to do it, presumably, but KT and SKT, is there a decent chance they might just use subs in a game? Uh, SKT might, considering they used Easy Hoon and Tom. KT will not. KT doesn't have very many subs, so they may use Edge. Maybe they'll use Edge instead of Nakne. But I don't think so. Is there any player... SKT is probably likely to use subs, by the way. Since they're the cheapest, is there any IM player... Or or second cheapest. Is there any IM player who's worth a gamble? Sure. Frozen, if he can win a game versus KT, does quite well. Ignar has been having a, a pretty good season overall for a support player. So you might... Consider him. He's pretty high, highly ranked as a support, actually, when it comes to when it comes to points. So, bearing in mind KT players, uh, in some cases, like some days, most expensive are tops. The rest of them are, tend to be like second or actually Pickaboo's only at the third in supports. So, That's which of the Pickaboo ones actually for KT? is really bad for fantasy points. He is pretty in low terms of, on the... If KT wins and you want to bet on them, which are the ones that are worth picking out? Arrow is definitely number one, followed by Nagne, followed by Sunday. The thing about, the thing about KT these days is that their, their, their fantasy points are less good than they used to be. And the weird thing about day one, day two here is that none of the teams put up a lot of points, which makes it a bit interesting because there's not a clear favorite, except for Jin Air. Jin Air, when they win, uh, Pilot and GBM are both in the top five. So that's why they're so expensive. Uh, that's why they're so expensive in this particular matchup. Um, if you can get a that couple also Jin means there's more edge, though, because if you do make one good pick that gets five more points, that might be enough right. to win the contest. Right. So I think Jin Air actually is a good is a good team to pick here, in spite of their expense. You may want to get either the Jin Air mid or the Jin Air AD carry, just because they are likely to have a good series. Um, even Chaser maybe, but and maybe there's a chance it goes to three games too because of how unstable Jin Air is recently and the fact that they just lost to Spenu. Uh, I think they're going to be extra mad and should take it, but this is all a bunch of one-sided matches. But KT, ever since this second round Robin started, their their players have not been getting so many fantasy points because the games have been a lot cleaner and they haven't been the old bloodbath that they used to be. And SKT is never very high in terms of fantasy points. So... Yeah. So here's the problem. For SKT players, nearly all of them are third most expensive or, you know, in that area, right? So the mm-hmm. issue becomes if you pick any SKT players, you probably 
I mean, presumably you're probably not going to pick the the two carries. You're not going to pick the AD carry in the mid laner because that's usually who you're spending someone else on probably. So which ones, yeah. Top is actually better for SK Telecom than AD carry is. Marin averages more points than Bang does, and he is the same price. So I would say Marin here, Marin and Faker are the ones you want to go for. But remember, SKT, again, is not a great team when it comes to fantasy points. So I'd rather have KT or Jyn Air. Yeah, but you can't just only have the two most expensive teams in all your lineup, mate. You will find that out. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, maybe you take a couple Anarchy players or something like that, try and balance it. All right, let's go over to... Oh, that reminds me, before I forget, for LCS on day one, Monty has a contest, $10 entry, 5,000 total prizes, so I assume 1,000 first place at least, called Monte Cristo's Braggart, Braggart Corner, and then I have one for day two, and mine's Thorin's Swag Jar. So, oh, and there's one that's LCK for Monty as well. Apparently Monty gets two contests. I see how it is. In that case, I want one in like LPL or something called Thorin's <laughs> Thorin Loves Clear Loves Team Fighting or something like that, or like <laughs> Thorin, Thorin's K Upton Clear Love Bonanza or something. Give mine a good name, but it has to be an L LPL one. Your so, names are anyway. terrible. My name is a great mate. That's a great one. <laughs> or oh, the reason we all love clear love. Something like that. One of those. Yes. Yes. It's the way I actually have. In a way, I've almost come to like clear love more because I've just put that positive association in my mind every time I think of him with the incredible cleavage of Kate Upton. So in a sense, I actually like him more. I want to see more of him, you know. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's look at day two of LCK. Day, so, day three and four, but yes. Yeah, day, same same stuff. So, Jynair play again. They play Koo. Spenu plays Najin, and KT plays Anarchy. Oh, and IM plays CJ. So we have one game, at least here. Jynair Koo. That's, that's yep. a, a two sides to it. Right. Uh, now, what's interesting is how cheap the Koo players are. Kuro is only behind Coco when it comes to points while winning. So at 7,700 and fourth most, Ku should win this game. I don't think Janir has much of a chance. But Kuro should be insane value here. Kuro and Prey both, when Ku wins, do really, really well when it comes to points. And they are so far down right here when it comes to actual... Yeah, when it comes to the uh, the salaries. Even... I mean, Coco's obviously the one you're going to want to go for. It's IM versus CJ. Coco always goes off when he wins. He, he, he is the best player to have on your team uh, alongside – well, he's the best player in the league to have on your team when it, when it comes to winning uh, for fantasy. Uh, space is also going to be good when it comes to IM versus CJ, but Ku Tigers, lots of value. Kuro, Prey, Smab, all very high point value players should be a really good series for them, and they're not even that expensive. So even though this is a show called by the numbers, implicitly predicated, Monty, on the notion of going by statistics and figuring out which the part smart, effective, efficient picks are, I know humans, okay, and humans like to go on superstition. So if you play poker, there's players who are bad players, right, who they'll have like a flush draw with two cards to come, so they're on the flop, and then they'll fold and the flush will get there on the last street and they'll be like, oh, if I did just stay in, I would have won. It's like, no, but you have to look at the bets and was that even worth, you know, like the value might not have been there. You would have won, yeah, this one time, but the next seven times it'll be the wrong play. So in the, in the spirit of that sort of superstitious thinking, Pete, I know a lot of people, Monty, who last time probably played one of these contests and then they didn't win. So like me, they jealously, enviously opened up that number one guy, the person who won the contest. And somehow, I'm sure that guy had like Spenu players in there or something. And he was, just because he hate, he also hates the universe and spites it. So he won. And so this put, superstition person will be like, I won't make that mistake again. I thought they had a chance. <laughs> so here's the question. Can Spenu beat Najin? Is there even a chance? No, no I think not in Why their not? current form. Because uh, Najin is looking much better, where we knew already that Jenner was sort of on a slump or on a downswing. Uh, Najin has, in their last several matches, not displayed any of that. And I just don't think they can get over Najin's individual skill. There's a reason why OQ is the most expensive AD carry on days three and four, because 
He's number three in the league when in fantasy points. He is a huge producer, and we've seen him outplay his opposition time and time again. So if you can afford OQ and Goon, you should definitely go for it here. And I don't think that Spenu has a chance of upsetting Najin. Just ba- change in that sense. Uh, probably you're just looking for the big point teams and the big point players. So I'd be looking and. It's also weird because uh, when you can play all seven matchups, you have to remember that KT, for example, has two play days this week. Janair has two play days this week. Um, Anarchy has two play days this week. So those play more expensive because they're playing two best of threes. So you definitely want to focus around the teams that are playing two best of threes. And of those, KT is going to be probably the most valuable because they've got two easy matchups that are pretty clear cut. Okay. Where, so uh, what generic, about the fact generic could be good value. Two. Yeah, generic could be good value because they should beat Anarchy, and then they will probably lose to Coup, but they'll get at least points right in the in the Coup matches. So generic actually could be very good value when it comes to when it comes to that pilot and GBM again. Okay, we should be back now, <laughs> assuming everything is in fact alive again. <laughs> So is there any... Okay, I, I, another thing to mention actually, Monty, as I noticed on the contest, unless I'm mistaken, I think they also had one here on Alpha Draft where you could play all of the LCS days together. Right. Uh, the LCK days, rather. Is that right. accurate? So the problem I there is, so. even though you can play something like seven matchups, <laughs> you just described that like one of them should be even matchup. So of, when you can play yeah. all seven, what does that change in that sense? Uh, probably you're just looking for the big point teams and the big point players. So I'd be looking, and it's also weird because uh, when you can play all seven matchups, you have to remember that KT, for example, has two play days this week. Janair has two play days this week. Um, Anarchy has two play days this week. So those play more expensive because they're playing two best of threes. So you definitely want to focus around the teams that are playing two best of threes. And of those, KT is going to be probably the most valuable because they've got two easy matchups that are pretty clear cut. Okay. Where, so uh, what generic, about generic could be good value. Two. Yeah, generic could be good value because they should beat Anarchy and then they will probably lose to Coup, but they'll get at least points, right, in the in the Coup matches. So generic actually could be very good value when it comes to when it comes to that. Pilot and GBM again. What about the fact that Anarchy plays twice? maybe if you think they're going to win but Mickey is the, really the only notable player when it comes to fantasy points from Anarchy and even then he's not that great so also uh, in this contest because SKT play once he's actually more expensive than Faker because <laughs> <laughs> he gets to play twice yeah I'd just gamble on Faker going ultra hard in that particular scenario if you want to spend that money there I can't see what the point would be I just think that taking CJ or, or Najin players at that point is potentially a better value, considering I just think Anarchy is going to get wrecked. Okay. Despite our inauspicious break there, I think that's the end of the show. Do you have any <laughs> final words? Nope. Just go check out the big contest. And, enter 20 uh, times. Curse enter yourself 20 that times. you don't win after 20 entries. Watch the next show. Maybe you learn some of nope. <laughs> that's, that's what I always say. But anyway... As usual, we have done this by the numbers.